So friends, many of you are familiar with the Jungle Room uh, at Graceland. Elvis never knew it as a Jungle Room. I know you hear me say that. He knew it as the Den. And you know that we have Jungle Room furniture in the Tiger Den at the Karate Dojo and Museum. This right here is Doris Landerman. Doris, you were present when Elvis bought that furniture. Yes. Tell us about that. First, tell us what he was wearing when he bought the furniture. He was wearing his karate outfit. And I know there are different ones, so I don't know exactly which one, but it was the white one. And uh, he had been across the street above the White Way Pharmacy in Crosstown Theater, where the Memphis Karate Institute was. Right, TKI. He was over there, and he was doing his karate lessons or whatever. And uh, Don Furniture was across the street. So I'm sure he had already been in there and probably looked at this furniture, but I'm not sure about that. But he did... Uh, was interested in it. So a friend of mine was manager of Donald's at the time, Jack Kaplan, and he was a friend of our family. And he called me and told me Elvis was on his way to buy some furniture. Did I want to come and see him? And I said, are you kidding? Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, it took me about 20 minutes to get there. I was living in Frazier at the time and drove up there and I beat you him there. You said you were painting. I was painting. Okay. So you just, just clean up real quick. <laughs> I never changed clothes so fast, probably as fast as he did in some of his things. But anyway, I would probably had paint all over me. But anyway, I changed and uh, ran and uh, went there. Like I said, I beat him there. And uh, so I was talking to Jack and just walking around a little bit. Here he came with Linda Thompson. And like I said, he had the karate uh, outfit on. He was driving that black Stutz Bear Hawk or whatever. They had a bear hawk and a black hawk. Okay. Yeah. So it could have been either one. This, I think, was the first one that he okay. bought. So anyway, um, I know they're both black, so it was a beautiful car. But anyway, uh, Elvis came in, and he was kind of looking around, he and Linda, and she was like on one place, and he was the other, so they weren't just standing together the whole time. And uh, he actually talked to the salesman's family on the telephone. And I thought that was sweet. You know, a lot of celebrities wouldn't take the time to do that. But he was so nice and, uh, you know, didn't rush it or anything. And so he actually didn't really look around. So I think he'd already picked this furniture out. But anyway, uh, Jack introduced me to him. And like I said, we lived in the same neighborhood a lot and went to the same school and all this. But uh, so you went to Humes High? I went to Humes High School, yes. And I used to live right behind Humes High on Woodlawn. Okay. In fact, the house is not there anymore. But uh, anyway, um, he uh, was talking to them, and I was kind of looking at this statue. It's a cherub. And uh, you know, it's like a cherub holding a vase or whatever. And so Jack introduced me to him, and... Uh, I said, yeah, we're in the same, not in the same circles, but in the same neighborhood. So he was real sweet, and I just was speechless. I mean, normally I'm not speechless, but I was that day. And I just was nodding my head, and you know, while he was talking, he was real soft-spoken. And um, so, like I said, I didn't know what to say, so he just kept talking. Then I, I started looking at this cherub, and so he told Jack, to put that on his bill, that he wanted me to have that. Really? So I still have that statue to this day. Wow, do you and have I, a photo of it? I have a photo of it, right there. All right, let's look at that. So there it is right there. So Elvis bought you that. Yes. The day that he bought the furniture for the den. Right. That is incredible. And I still have it to and this And you day. still have it. Yeah, I keep it in my closet because I don't want anything to have to it. But, um, Anyway, like I said, we talked for a few minutes, and then they kept on looking. And, of course, you know, he's kind of in and out, so he wasn't there very long. But uh, I watched him as he went out the door and waved, you know, and he waved back, and they took off. And uh, that's, that's, that's my story. I mean, that's what it was. It was not very long, but uh, just the idea of meeting him, you know. And I'd seen him. We lived, like I said, in North Memphis, and I'd seen him at Holly's Flower Shop. Seen him on his motorcycle around the school. He really loved his old neighborhood. And I lived in Lauderdale Courts, too. I lived at 465A Alabama, and I think he lived at 462 across the street. They torn his house down because they put that 
straight to go to the interstate. Yes, yeah, but the edge of where it's at, we figured it out where it was at. Right. And uh, did you know the blacks that lived? Did you know Bill and them? Bill Black, actually, uh, Bill Black's mother lived next door to me. Okay. And they had, she had eight children. So what unit would she have been in? It's a horse. It's, it's shaped like a, a half of a square. Well, this is Alabama, and if you're looking straight on, I was in the corner apartment, and she was the one next door. Okay, so and and we'll talk about story. that off camera. I'm sorry to bring that no, up. No, that's but, okay. But I'll, I'll draw it out because I we I have a a uh, something from the phone book showing her address, but they changed some of the unit numbers. So okay. I just want to figure out exactly which one. Well, she would probably live at 465B. Okay. And it was B. You're exactly right. Yeah. So once we get done, I'm going to draw that out and get okay. you to tell me that so we can pinpoint that. So we have a copy of, of this, and what I'll do is take a picture of it, and I'll put it, but this is a receipt from Donald Furniture from that day, and this would have been August the 8th, 1974 right there and this is where Elvis bought it. He actually paid cash cash money while he was there and you can see that the bill he marked it out was twenty three thousand. So you said you didn't know whether he paid more than twenty three well, or they gave him a deal, but you know that he gave him Benji's real money. Okay. And I would you know, I I would we're gonna get that close to get in his business, you know. I'm not gonna stand there and watch them count up money or anything. But anyway, uh uh, it was an exciting time for me. So. That was a good friend to call you, to have you come. <laughs> well, he was, but he knew how crazy I was about Elvis. You know, everybody was crazy about Elvis back back in then, and still today, I'm crazy about Elvis. And it's not the it's not the music as much as the man. I mean, he was just a wonderful human being. People just don't know the sweet side of him, you know. And uh, he's done so much that. Uh, People don't will never hear about because people don't talk about that. It's about his music, and of course, no one can sing hymns like he can. That's I fine. cry every time I hear them, so it's just it touches your heart and your soul. Knowing he was Christian too. It's important. It's Nothing important. more important than Jesus. No, no you're right. That's fine. Uh, so, and we just heard a story that nobody's ever heard before, where Elvis bought you something. So, how many times did he do that in his life, where he just gave people things? Constantly. That was his jam. All That's what time. he did. All the time. That's it. So there's something that we left out of this is when he bought you the vase, tell us what he did. He picked the vase up. I was looking at it. And like I said, I was just really trying to uh, keep from staring at him. So I was just looking and I picked it up and set it down and walked away. And he picked the vase up and handed it to Mr. Kaplan and said, I want her to have this. So. Anyway, that's pretty amazing. So there it is right there, friends. So and you still have it. I still have it. I love that. I'll have it. But you didn't uh, spray paint to keep the fingerprints. I on didn't. Or no, I should have. I should have put it in a, something to keep <laughs> preserve the fingerprints. That's but, it. <laughs> but I got his signature right here. So. Yes, indeed you did. And I know that's real. So I was there when he did it. So. That's very cool. So when I was searching out the history of Donald Furniture, I found some of these. This was 1974, just before Elvis bought the furniture. I was hoping, you see this says July 4, 74. I was hoping to see Jungle Room Furniture, uh, Whitco, in these newspapers. Sadly, they were not there, but all these are around that time period that Elvis went in and bought furniture. Now I'm going to show you where Donald Furniture was. That building right there was where, and actually I talked to the lady, she said the entire building was the furniture store at the time. The Jungle Room furniture came from this business, but the main part of it, the address in the phone book is 405, so it's this part. And it has been built out, and it is in fact a, maybe a furniture store now, I don't know. It look, no, it looks like it's empty still. So right up here is where the Karate Institute was, TKI, where Elvis left in his karate gi, went across the street. Of course, they drove, as she mentioned, with Linda, went into that building right there and bought the furniture. And that is TKI, and it's still a working dojo upstairs with Patrick Wren. I have videos about it. So if you want to support this effort, make sure that you subscribe, like, and then join. That helps us to get more videos out there. Yes, it does.